Welcome to this first episode of Meditation for Beginners, which is going to be a look behind the scenes at meditation to find out some of the theoretical background to how we can meditate better on our own at home. In this first episode, we're going to be taking a look at exactly what we mean by meditation and also some of the benefits of meditation which have been found in scientific research. Many of you here may be wondering exactly what we mean by the word meditation because it's a word which we hear in many contexts and sometimes, according to the different contexts, the word may mean completely different things. But according to our context here, we are interested in meditation as a way of training the mind to become more efficient and also as a way to balance the mind together with that other important component of ourselves, which is our body. In the ideal world, our spiritual well-being, that is the well-being of our mind, and our physical well-being will go hand in hand. And if we meditate in the proper way, then this is going to be a way in which we can rebalance body and mind together to become a whole human being. If we are really a healthy person, then we have to take an interest in meditation because there's more and more evidence that the diseases of the modern world, whether it be things like stress or insomnia or even things like depression, they're coming from a lack in our spiritual well-being. And these are some of the things which I'll show you a little bit later on, things which meditation can help to redress. In fact, there are many different sorts of meditation in the world. There are two main sorts divided by the place in which we focus our mind when we're doing the meditation. In the first sort of meditation, people tend to focus outside their body. These sort of meditations are not something we're going to be covering on this particular uh, course. Meditation outside the body is not something we're going to be covering on this particular presentation. What we are more interested in is the second sort of meditation where we are focusing inside the body. And in fact, there are more than 40 different ways to meditate in this sort of technique. When we're talking about Dhammakaya meditation, we're talking about a meditation with a synthesis of many of those 40 different sorts of meditation. For example, it includes elements of mindfulness of breathing, because when we are meditating in the Dhammakaya technique, we tend to focus our mind at the center of the body, which is also the point of the deepest breath. It also includes elements of mindfulness of the body, because in fact we are focusing at the center of the body the whole of the time which we are meditating. Also, we are focusing on a bright object, and this is something we're going to see a little more of later when we get down to actually meditating for ourselves. When we are conducting the Dhammakaya meditation, in fact, the method is characterized by two different things. It's characterized by the fact that we are focusing at the center of the body. And the second thing is that we are trying to stop the mind, which means to stop the mind from thinking. If we can meditate successfully, then we will successfully manage to bring the mind to what we call a standstill. There are many good reasons to meditate. And since 1935, there have been more than 150 scientific studies conducted on meditation, many of which have shown the benefits which come from practicing meditation regularly. There have been effects caused by meditation, such as reducing people's stress, uh, reducing depression, and even improvement of uh, personal virtues. And what I'd like to do now is to introduce to you some of the research concerning the different aspects of improvements which are coming about by those who meditate. The first uh, graphic I'd like to show you is a graphic from research done on two different groups. A piece of research done over a total of six weeks, where one group meditated during six weeks and the control group uh, didn't do any meditation at all during that time. What we can see from this graphic here is the effect of the meditation during six weeks on the blood pressure of those involved in the study. What we see for the control group, which is the green line here, is that blood pressure levels did not change during the six-week period. 
However, for those who meditated, blood pressure decreased and stayed low, as you can see on the red, yellow and orange lines here. The different uh, colors indicate the different qualities of meditation. Those who meditated better were able to reduce their blood pressure more. On this second graphic here, we see the levels of cortisol in the blood. You may not be familiar with cortisol, but in fact it is a hormone in the blood which indicates the level of stress in the body. The more cortisol we have, the more stressed we appear to be. And what we find again is that for the control group, when they did no meditation during the six-week period, the levels of cortisol stayed high and constant during the six-week period. However, for those who meditated, what we find is that the levels of cortisol dropped and stayed low during the six-week period. Again better they meditated, the more they were able to reduce their stress levels. Moving on to a third graphic now, we are looking at a piece of research on the effect of meditation on depression. Depression can be caused by many different things, because of brain chemistry, sometimes it's because of attitudes in life. What we find is that meditation can help those who have attitude problems to help them to become less depressed. In this before-after scenario, what we find is that before the study started, about one-third of the sample were suffering from depression of various sorts. However, after the study, about half of these are being cured of depression, and this would be the part suffering from attitude problems. If you're not a person with problems, you may be wondering whether meditation is something for you. But in fact, what I'd like to emphasize very strongly is that it's only a minority of people who meditate because of personal problems. Most people who are interested in meditation these days are interested in improving on what they already have. If they're already healthy, then they become more healthy as a result of their meditation. And what we see here in this uh, fourth graphic is that meditation can also people realize a higher level of personal virtues. There's a very interesting piece of research done in Thailand by Pupatana and Sibandit in 1996. And what they found was that for a big spectrum of different personal virtues, for those who meditated for six weeks, the level of virtues tended to increase during that time, whether it be things like patience or job satisfaction, the ability to be a good friend to others, or even the ability to adapt to one's situation better. All of these virtues were increased by the ability of a person to meditate during a six-week period. So what we can see is that meditation can help us a great deal, more than things like just sleeping or being hypnotized or changing our diet or even physical exercise. Meditation can help us in many different ways and it can help us to adapt to our environment better, it can give us more job satisfaction, it can help us with work efficiency, study skills and even our study scores. So these are many good reasons why we should want to practice meditation more. These are coming not just from my personal opinion, but they are coming from scientific research in every case. So meditation in one respect is like many other activities, sports, crafts and skills. And it is similar in that we cannot get better at it just by talking about it or reading about it. Like any skill, you have to gain expertise by actually doing it. Meditation will be of only limited use to you if you practice it on and off. The key to success in meditation is a commitment to meditate once or twice each and every day. You can think about meditation like embarking on a new career with a new employer. If you turn up for work only when you feel like it, then I'm sure you will not get very far in your new career. Training in meditation is like the way in which a sportsman trains himself in order to play their sport in a, an adept way. For example, a runner may train himself for a full year and run for many miles, simply to take part in an important sprint of 100 meters. In the same way, a meditator needs to train himself, sometimes over the course of many years, on a daily basis in order to be able to attain access to higher states of mind. So what is important to emphasize is the continuity of your practice. You have to do this by trying to build meditation into your daily routine. And one way to do this is to pick a time of the day 
when you know that you're going to be free at the same time each day. It can be in the morning or it can be in the evening or maybe at another time of day which you find suitable for yourself. If you meditate in the morning, as soon as you get up, maybe take a shower, do some light exercise and then sit down to meditate. This can be an excellent start to the day. For those who prefer to meditate in the evening, perhaps meditate before going to bed. Don't think this is a waste of your time. This will help you to sleep much more deeply and when you wake up in the morning you will feel refreshed instead of feeling like you'd like to go back to sleep for another hour. One of the most important things about meditation is the point where we focus our mind when we're meditating. And in the technique which we're going to study, we focus our mind at a place which we call the center of the body. In fact, it's a place inside us, about two finger breadths above our navel, in the very center of our body, somewhere in the area of our stomach. And this point is a very interesting point. It's a place which is known to masters of meditation throughout the ages. Sometimes it's a point which has been used for yogic practice and sometimes even in the Chinese martial arts. It's also a point which is the deepest point where the breath goes. And what is interesting from the point of view of meditation is that if we are able to focus our mind at this point, the mind is able to become peaceful very quickly indeed. Because it's like this place is the place where all the wisdom of the body and mind is stored. And if we are able to bring our mind to a standstill at this point, it's like we have access to all the inner wisdom inside ourselves. So when you have found out the method of meditation which suits you the best, then the important thing is to put it into practice in your everyday life. Try to find time to sit for meditation, maybe starting with 20 minutes a day. And practicing in this way each and every day you will start to build up more confidence in the meditation. Some people find it's good if they can meditate alone. They prefer the peace and quiet of being uh, away from other people. However, if you like to meditate as a group, it can also give you a lot of encouragement to help you keep up with your meditation as you start out as a beginner. So today has been a short introduction to meditation, some of the benefits of it, and also its definition as well. Next time we meet, I'd like to go on to talk a little bit more about how meditation actually can work for us. So I look forward to seeing you next time round.